Hey, welcome everybody. I'm really excited about this video because uh, I put a lot of uh, time and effort into make it short and concise for everyone out there. You know, we know everyone it's kind of having issues either finding employees lately. And obviously this is one way to actually outsource one of the most important um, uh, positions in your company, which is customer service. Um, so in this presentation, you know, I'm gonna show you the six easy steps to hire a rockstar customer service virtual assistant from the Philippines for only four fifty per hour. Um, so my name is Chris, and I'm owner of Queen Bee Cleaning Service in Seattle. Uh, we started a business in 2015 with my wife Sandra. Uh, we currently have 20 employees, and um, we have done 3.5 million total sales since we opened. Um, you know, we, we're currently at $85,000 in monthly revenue and we're on pace to reach the $1 million per year. So we're really, very really excited. Um, and so we have learned quite a bit over the last six years. And this, uh, in this presentation, I'm going to show you exactly how it, we use uh, virtual assistants to run our business. Um, so in the next minutes, I'm going to show you the six easy steps to hire our Rockstar customer service the very first time. Um, I'm going to show you the number one mistake everyone makes when hiring a VA and how you're going to avoid it. The technology that filters, sorts, and qualifies the applicants automatically. And the secret to building the right relationship with your VA so they don't leave you for your competition. So let's address some concerns. Um, these are very valid concerns that I was uh, watching on the Facebook group uh, the other day. And the, the major one it was the how is their English. Um, so, you know, I've seen a lot of people kind of hesitant because they think, uh, you know, they don't understand from the American perspective. But to be honest, uh, the fact is that English is their first language and they learn it from a very young age and they're very familiar with American culture. They watch US TV shows, um, movies, so they're very, um, uh, you know, familiar with or, or with American culture. Um, you know, some of them, they do have a slight accent, but that's when you have to do the interview before hiring. So let's dive in, you know. Do you find yourself constantly putting out fires with your customers or spending time doing administrative tasks rather than business development tasks? Will you, will you like to source all these tasks for four fifty an hour to a virtual assistant? Now, I know you might be super skeptical, but I'll explain exactly how this works. And how can you leverage the global economy to escape having to pay $15 an hour minimum wage? But Chris, isn't that exploitation or taking advantage? No. In the Philippines, the minimum wage is $10 per day. This makes a remote position attractive and allows us to get highly skilled labor for $4.50 an hour. So what does a customer VA can do? Well, they can answer sales calls, book jobs, reschedule jobs, cancel jobs, run credit cards, issue refunds, respond to emails, texts, and ch offer chat support, provide quotes, and follow up with those quotes. And also, I think it's one of the most important hand to complaints. Um, so here's some of the companies in the US that are actually outsourcing currently uh, customer service to the Philippines. So we have Comcast, Chase, you know, Ring Central, Nike, Apple, Walmart, GMs, um, you know, the reality is that with the minimum wage going to 15 an hour, many business owners will need to uh, find an expensive labor in order to keep open and, and, you know, and surviving. So let's do some math. You know, it's, it, it really uh, comes down to how much money goes to your bottom line. And by hiring a VA, it's, it's one great way to free some of the uh, money that you're making and reinvest it into growing the business. So. A simple breakdown or your savings, let's say you have a $15 per hour office person, you know, time, you know, 40, 40 hours a week, that's $2,400 a month or 28,000 a year, almost 29,000. Now, a virtual assistant in the Philippines, it's 450 an hour times 40 hours a week, that's 720 or 8,640 a year. That's a savings of $20,000 that goes directly to the bottom line. So imagine how, how what else can you do with those $20,000? You know, you can reinvest and, you know, uh, buying equipment, 
um, even hire uh, more people or, you know, invest in marketing, whatever you can do. But this is a great way um, and a great example of how leveraging the uh, a global economy and outsourcing um, customer service to uh, another country can save you, a, you know, and, and potentially uh, increase your growth uh, so much faster for your company. So <clears throat> the number one mistake everyone makes when hiring a customer service VA is that um, a lot of people want to go to these places, you know, Upwork and uh, online just PH, and they want a VA that's going to do, you know, web development, social media, uh, customer service, and run ads for me, run Google ads for me, run Facebook ads. And it's not really realistic. Um, you know, we're really focusing on one specific skill, and that's to be good on the phone so you can uh, increase your sales. So hire a VA that specifically does customer service. If they happen to have more skills, then great, you know. But it, 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 what we're looking is so, to have someone that is professional on the phone and then can actually increase your sales. So this is the simple six steps process that it that I um, use and that it helps me, you know, to find um, you know talent fairly quickly without having to you know shuffle to so many applicants because this is what happens when you post a job online, you're gonna get hundreds of applicants and that you know creates a little bit of problem because now you have to review everyone and then kind of make your decision who you want to um, hire. So this process that I use, it's so simple. It actually filters a lot of the applicants um, and then actually gives you a list of um, the best applicants that you can just you know um, reach out and then do a final interview. So let's, we're gonna go in deeper, you know, step by step uh, in how this process works. And, and it will totally blow your mind how, how easy it is. So let me minimize here my screen. And this guide, if at uh, the end of the video, there's gonna be a link where you're gonna click and you're gonna be able to go and download this guide. It's a step-by-step -step breaking down process and how to do, um, you know, how to hire a customer VA. Um, it, it really works. It's the best uh, you can find out there right now. Um, it's not bluff. It's really simple. Just follow these directions and you're going to get your VA within uh, a week or so. So let's get to it. Um, so the first thing we, you know, we're going to do is uh, post the job on online jobs PH. So we're going to go to online jobs PH and we're going to copy and paste this job post. So now let me show you how it's going to look like when you go to your uh, account. So you need to create a paid account. Otherwise, it, they have a free account, a free account, but it takes like three days for your job post to be approved. And then not many people will see your job post. So pay only one, one month, you know, one fee for one month. And I think it's $59 or something like that. Um, and then post your job and then that's going to be enough for you to hire someone. So in this example, you know, last time I, I, I was running an ad for uh, customer service, I got 133 applicants. Um, and let's, let's take a look and see how it, it, it reads. So, you know, it's a full-time job, you know, for 50 an hour. Um, this is exactly the, the, the text that is here on the instructions. Um, Obviously, the only thing you need to change is uh, putting your email here. This is very important. So, you know, let's let's read it real quick. You know, you want to be very descriptive on the job post, uh, meaning you need to be clear and upfront what exactly you're looking out of them. So in this case, you know, it, it's I'm saying hey, you're going to send me daily reports detailing me everything that you're doing. You know, you're going to take inbound sales, sales calls, contact requests, uh, customer requests, complaints and make outbound calls. You know, you're gonna respond these uh, uh, messages via phone, email, live chat, Facebook Messenger, uh, and text. You know, you're gonna provide service quotes and make, make sure you're gonna do a follow-up with leads, book new jobs, reschedule and update service jobs and, and or booking calendar system. You, you And identify customer needs, clarify information, research every issue, and provide solutions. 
Um, this is a full-time position. You need to have excellent English skills. The work hours are Monday through Friday, 8 to 4, and Saturday, 8 to 2, Pacific Standard Time. 450 to start with races every six months and performance bonuses every three months. If accepted, you will be provided with a training to help, um, you know, for customer service, blah, blah, blah. Here you will replace this field with your email where you're going to uh, receive these applicants. But then this is where the magic starts. Pay attention. Um, send an email to your customer service email or your personal email, whatever you want to use. With the subject line, I want to be a call center agent. Now, it's very important and bear with me. Please include a link to your online jobs profile with the email and when you apply, and then complete the Google form that you will receive in an email. Note, after you send the email to apply, you will receive a response from me with a link to a Google form. Please complete the questions in the Google form to be considered for these positions. Forms that are not completed or only partially completed will not be considered. In the form, you will be asked your age. Answer 40 to prove you're paying attention to detail. Now, this is the trap question. This right here will filter so many applicants that are just constantly just applying for jobs online. And these are gonna be uh, uh, specifically to filter those people. And then only people who pay attention are gonna answer that the age is 40. And those are the people you wanna to talk to because they're really paying attention to detail. That's a small little a tip, but it works every time. And I'm gonna show you how that works. Um, so basically, this is all just the details that go into the job post when you're filling it out. Um, and then, you know, once that you post the job, you know, if you need to publish it, it's gonna take a few hours to, to get uh, approved. Um, what you wanna do is the second step, we're gonna create a Google form. So this is where we're gonna send um, the applicants to, where we're gonna ask a set of questions. And this is just to get a better sense of who they are and, and if they have some experience in some other industries. So we're gonna create a Google form with the following questions. So this is the, the form title, right? The form description. And these are the form questions. So it's really 13 questions. You know, the first one is tell me a bit yourself. Where are you from? What are your hobbies? What is something that interests you? How long have you been working in the customer service related jobs? Can you please describe your customer service experience with past clients in the last two years? You know, what specific software do you use? What tasks do you handle for them? Email, phone, live chat. What industry have they been in? You know, you really want to paint a clear picture of who you're gonna be uh, interviewing. So these are very, very important questions. Um, what is your greatest strength as a customer service VA? And what is the, you have the most experience with? You know, um, have you had experience with other uh, business similar to mine? How many clients do you currently have and how many hours are you currently working for them? Um, again, you go over the uh, specifications, you know, this job is between from say seven to eight, eight to four. How does that work for you? You know, we're looking to hire at 450 per hour. Are you good with that rate? What is your age? This is the tricky question. If you remember, this is what they need to answer 40. Um, then the other one is like, make a loom video of your internet connection using this site, fast.com, then paste the loom video here. And then record your voice and upload the audio here. Make it at least 30 seconds long. Um, enter your full name and email, and then you're gonna save the form and then you're gonna save the link. And I'm gonna show you exactly how that form looks like. So, this is the form that you're gonna create on Google Forms. And you, we want the best customer service representative. Is that you? This is the form description. And again, these are the questions, right? Tell me a bit yourself. How long have you been working in customer service related jobs? Blah, 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 blah. But then if you notice, I got only four responses. And if you, if you remember, I got, I had 133 applicants out of the 133 applicants, only 40 people took the time to, to submit their request. So I already filtered a whole bunch of people that were not even uh, worth looking at. And now I'm left with, you know, 40 people who took the time to respond. 
But now this is where it gets uh, really good. Um, and before I can get ahead of myself, um, you know, the first thing you need to do is create the questions and then you're going to create a, a spreadsheet. Um, you know, in this spreadsheet, all the answers will be pasted and I'll, I'll go back to here to show you. But what you want to do is, you know, say the link. And then we're going to save this link because we're going to create an email template inside Gmail where we're going to auto send um, this form to people who applies the right way. So this is another tricky uh, thing that, you know, it works fantastic. Um, so the first thing you need to do, well, let's go back. Let's go back to step by step. Remember, so Google for questions. These are the questions. Save the form and copy the share link, which we already have on our clipboard. Right. Copy. OK, fantastic. The next steps is to create an automated email opt in with a set of instructions in what to do next. Um, this is going to save you so much time. Literally, it, this is all automated. Um, what you want to do is go to your Gmail and you're going to go to settings. Click all settings. Then you're going to click advanced. And then you want to make sure that templates option is enabled. Most of the times it's disabled, so you want to enable it because we need that in order to, to create this template. So check it out. And the way you're going to do is you're going to create a template, an email, and then you're going to copy and paste this text. And then in this part, we're going to paste the Google form. Link right, that you just created. And then let's take a look real quick to what it says. Hey, thank you for applying and for doing it correctly. You will not believe how many people screw this part up. So we are off to a good start. Now you can advance to the next phase. Please complete the form. You have you know 24 hours to finish it. After completing the form, I will review your responses and I will contact you with further instructions. Um, I understand this might seem like a lot for a job interview, but please understand that this is to showcase that we're not looking for someone who's looking for just a job, but we're really looking for some an employee who's looking to grow with us. Uh, looking forward to speaking with you soon. Now, we're going to send this email to the applicants who send you on the subject line, I want to be a call center agent. Whoever does not type that in on the subject, they're not going to receive the form. So you don't have to worry about them because remember, we're looking for people who's paying attention to detail and then they will follow through with every single uh, instructions you tell them. Um, so on the subject line, actually, no, this is, this is the subject line they need to send, but the subject line for this is this one. I'm sorry. Getting ahead of myself. Okay. And then we're going to save this as a template. So after you paste this into an email and then you replace the Google form link with the one that you created. Now we're going to click it's the three little dots and then you're going to go to templates and then you're going to get save drafts, save draft as a template and then you're going to name it. I already have a name as you can see. I actually have two templates because you need two templates to automate all this process. So the first one is thank you for applying, which is this one. And then another one that is a full book, your final job interview. This is for the people who answer everything correctly. They answer the catch question correctly. And now um, uh, you're ready to move into the actually interview. So after you click save template, what you want to do is actually create a filter. So let me show you how that works. So this is the automation part where Gmail comes in. Um, you're going to click the little arrow down. And then on the subject, this is where you're going to paste the subject that we're looking 
to trigger the automation. So as the subject is, I want to be called so center agent, and we're going to create a filter. The filter is when an email comes in with that subject line, we're going to apply the label. Actually, I created a label for, you know, tagging the people who are an applicants, who you can see right here. Then the second step is send a template. Thank you for applying for the customer service job. And then you create a filter. Once you do that, then every time that someone from the job sends you an email with the subject line, it's going to respond to them with a template. And that's going to send them the Google form where they have another 24 hours to answer the other questions. Um, I hope there's no questions so far here. And if, and if you do, you know, you can reach out to me and I can, you know, explain to you with more detail. But let's move forward. After, you know, the people start, you know, sending you the first part of the application, they're going to receive this form. They're going to come here and they're going to start filling out the, the, the questions. All we need to do now is click on the Google Sheets that is created. And if you remember, all we're looking is for people who pay attention. So these are the people who actually answered the, the, the question correctly for years, for years, for years. All right, fantastic. So out of 133 applicants, only 40 answered correctly the first step. Then out of those 40 who took the time to answer the questions, only one, two, three, four, five, six, seven people answered the right question. So now my job is so much easier because now I'm just gonna go through their profiles, their answers, you know, for who are they, where are they from, hobbies, and that will help me, you know, to drill down even more to see who I want to interview. Now, what I did in this case, I actually interview everyone because I really wanted to have a feel on, 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 you know, for, 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 for my, for my company. So what you need to do now is go back to the steps. Step four, you know, we check the Google form responses and then we're going to email I mean, this is a manual email, this is not automated. So we're going to send a manual email to the best candidates, the ones that we want to create um, an interview or have the interview. So what you're going to do is you're going to create a, an email, already have the template, but you want to create it. And basically the email says, hey, book your final job interview. Congratulations on doing such an excellent job with the customer support application. You're one of my final candidates. I would like to schedule an interview on Slack. Book your interview here. So this is my calendar system. If you have Calendly, I'll suggest you uh, use that. Whatever booking form you, you know, or system you use, because you want them to book, um, you know, an appointment with, in, in, a, in a window that you allow in your booking system. Then after the booking your appointment, please join my Slack here. And then you're going to paste your Slack um, channel. In this case, you know, if you go to your Slack, all you need to do is click um, invite people and then copy invite link. And then you paste that. So that way they book their appointment for you for the final interview. And then they add themselves to your Slack where you're going to um, have the interview. All right, fantastic. And we're almost done, you know. Uh, th that was the hardest part uh, of the process. So schedule your Slack interview. So start the interview at the time they select it. You wanna keep the conversation going smooth. Notice how long do they take to respond to your questions. You wanna look for someone who thinks on their feet and answers quickly. So that's why you do the Slack interview before you even do a Zoom interview. Because before that, you really want to take the time and see how long did it take to respond. Because remember, it's going to be a virtual uh, position, so they need to be very responsive. So this is one way to do the final part. And let me show you exactly what they do. I mean, the questions are pretty, pretty straightforward. They're kind of similar to the previous questions on the Google form, but this time you want to really see 
how long are they taking to respond? So hi there, you know, get started. Just some quick expectations for a chat. You know, we it would be about 30 minutes and then I'll ask you to be honest with your answers and then you let me know if you have any questions. I'll do the same. And 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 then at the end of the conversation, let me know if you have you know any any doubts or not. So I'm gonna show you one of the interviews that I did so you get a feel on how this flow works. And basically all these questions you need to you know ask them one at a time, but let's go back to to one of my uh interviews. So say hey, good morning, we'll start shortly. Say hi Christopher, good morning. So let's get started. Hey, tell me a little bit about yourself. Why do you choose to become a BA? Um, you know, this person has five years in, in the industry now, so it has a lot of experience. Most of the accounts and clients uh, were based in the United States. Uh, I want to become a VA because I know I'll be able to apply all the things that I've learned in my previous company. Um, okay, well, how many clients do you currently have and how many hours, you know, you're currently working for them? Um, so, as of now, he's unemployed, so doesn't have any clients. Just finished his contract with the, you know, previous company. Um, and it can render 35 to 40 hours per week. Um, you know, what type of work have you had with these other clients? You know, customer service, billing, sales, and even collections. Also take calls for the reception. All right, we're looking for someone from this time to this time, right? That would be fine. Do you have noise canceling headset? The noises will be heard in the background when taking calls. Yes, I do. You know, what other skills do you have? Research, lead gen, copywriting, email marketing, Adobe, WordPress. And I started using Canva, but honestly, I'm not that proficient. Okay, that's fine. The rate for this position is 350 an hour. Are you comfortable starting at that rate? Yes. What interested you in this position? No, oh, I work in as an Air work with Airbnb for as a middle person for the host and guest. And I think I think I'd be able to apply the skills that I learned from the work experience. So as you can see, he has worked for an Airbnb host before. So I know he's familiar with the uh, home industry business or, or cleaning business because they deal with cleaners. So this was a good sign. So I was like, perfect. Um, so you just keep going, you know, just, just keep going through all the questions that you have. And all you're looking really is to see how long they take in to respond and then Hey, uh, you know, I'm going to let you know, thank you for your time. I'll be interviewing other final candidates and I'll get back to you with a final answer. All right. Thank you so much. You know, at the end, I went and interviewed more people and I found even uh, more qualified people than him. So I ended up, you know, choosing someone else. But if you notice, you know, I still told him, hey, Adam, my decision was very tough. And ultimately, I hired another person for the position. If you don't mind, I'd like to keep your contact information if another position is available in the future. Thank you for applying. Because, you know, you never know. I, I wasn't sure if the other person was going to work. So I always had like an option um, for someone else that I also show potential. All right. Very good. So that's pretty much it. You know, after interviewing everyone on the Slack, um, you're going to have a really good gut feeling that it just feels right. Like, you know, this is the person that I want to work with. Um, and then from there, oh, now you, now you can move into a Zoom interview. Um, now you can do the final one because you want to make sure that, you know, they're the right fit for your company. So this is the last six step, you know, Zoom interview and on board. So you're going to send the message to everyone who you think they might be a potential, um, uh, you know, uh, employee and down the road. And you're going to send this other one to the people. To the person who you did hire hey you know we check everyone and you're the you know the most qualified person you know i want to set an interview for tomorrow at this time uh, so we can discuss your employment details and so this is the message that you're going to be sending and then in the zoom meeting you know just go in, in detail more talk to about them you know ask them a little bit more personal questions and just go again over their duties, you know, answer any questions they may have. Be extremely specific again about what you want from them. Be transparent and upfront and make sure they're 100% okay with the offer salary. Uh, you don't want someone that, you know, in a month comes back to you and say, hey, you know, I know I said this, but I realize it's a little work, so I need a raise. And I'm like, okay, 
Well, at that point, you know, you can make the decision that, that you know, they can get that raise right away. Or, but you want to avoid that. You really want to build them up on the long run. Um, so after you, you know, do the final Zoom interview, then you're going to send them your employment agreement where it, it, it outlines everything that they're supposed to do. You're going to send them the, the IRS form W-A-B-E-N. So this is the form that they need to sign. They fill it out with their information. They sign it. And this is basically um, for, your, uh, for your accountant. So they know what the, when the, you're making payments to that person are from a subcontractor outside the U.S. Um, these are, you know, general tips after the onboarding. Um, you're going to give them access to your business email and then have them read the last four weeks of emails so they get to see how do you respond to your customers. Um, you know, this is on the first week before even letting them touch the uh, phone. First, you really want to get them involved in your business, give them access to your uh, uh, phone system again, um, and then also have them listen to the last four weeks of calls so they get familiar with how you know your customers interact with you. Um, you know, give them access to your scheduling software and have them watch the tutorials. Most scheduling softwares have tutorials, so they need to get familiar with, with, with your company. Uh, so for the first week, don't worry about, you know, have you answered anything? Just get him, get him, uh, uh, you know, familiar with with your processes. Um, then what you want to do is, is create a Hubstab account. Hubstab is a software that they download into their computer, and then basically they clock in, and then they clock out, so it tracks their time, but also takes the screenshots from the computer, so you know that they're not, you know, watching YouTube or whatnot. You know, it's it's it's. I'm pretty old, you know. Uh, cool with that, you know, you don't expect anyone to be completely doing, um, you know, customer service. They can watch YouTube and whatnot, but when you see that they're spending too much time doing that, then it's time for you to say, hey, maybe you have enough time for you to help me with something else. Um, so Hubstaff software is really, really important because it really shows you what they're doing. Um, then the other thing you want to do is, is create a WISE account, a business-wise account. This is for sending payments to to them. Um, so all you do is you connect your bank account from your business to WISE, and then at the end of the paid um, period, you're going to calculate how many hours they work for you, and then you're going to do the calculation based on how many how many hours, you know, times whatever you want to pay them, and then you send that money through TransferWISE, and then that will also, uh, you know, be disclosed to your bookkeeper so they know what that money or payment is for. Um, and then, yeah, so when it's time for you BA to start responding emails, so don't let them respond to your emails just yet. So have them start creating the draft in responses and then show you what they're going to say. Make sure that you're okay with that. And then after a few weeks, you're going to start, you know, letting go of the, of the, um, drafting, and then they can start responding on their own. Um, you know, have constant and open communication with them throughout the day. I love Slack because that's how I communicate. I just, whatever issue, um, as you can see, you know, there's call types, you know, they tell me, okay, this call came in, this is the customer, it's complaining, you know, customer said that we did a good job, blah, blah, blah. So every call, every email, every text, it's on my Slack um, uh, channel. And just, I just get notifications. So I'm always on the loop what's happening, even though I'm not answering anything. You can see latest messages. They tell me, you know, when there's new bookings, cancellations, all type or schedules, literally everything, whatever's happening, even though I'm not answering, I constantly on the, on the no, because I know what's happening. So definitely want to do this. So use Slack to communicate. Um, and then, yeah, pretty much it. I think we're almost done. Um, this is sort of eight tips that I, you know, I added on to the guide that you're going to get. Um, so I'm not going to read them, but they're very, uh, um, important. So, you know, set rules for angry customers, set rules for, you know, customer language, no more than 15 minutes to respond to emails or quotes. You know, you want to have backups sorry, for your customer service reps. So. Uh, in my case, I have three. I started with one, now I have three. 
So if someone, some of them get sick or some of them want vacation, you have other people to, to cover everyone. Um, keep, keep your customer service happy, you know, give them praise, congratulate them when they are doing a good job. You know, set expectations how, how fast things should get done and regularly evaluate, you know, the customer service schedule. So, um, and then have weekly meetings. These are the tips that really help you to um, keep your VAs for the long, longest time without leaving for your competition. And and so there you go. So you're gonna get this guy. It's a step by step, but like like you saw, you know, just follow the steps, and and you should be getting a VA within a week. Um. So again, you know, just kind of going over, you know, customer service training, send the employment agreement, giving access to your, you know, we spoke about this. Four weeks of email so they can see, they can read, they can listen. Um, and then this is very important, you know, be open to their suggestions. You know, these people have worked for other U.S. companies, so they can teach you how to optimize your current process in your business. Um, you know, and then, like, again, communication is key. This is really make them feel confident, you know, let them know that they're perfect for the job. They see comfort and security just like uh, you and I, you know, everybody wants to work for a company that is secure and is going to give them employment for the you know, longest time. So make them feel, you know, that's a really important part of your company. Um, like I said, start them slow and build. Don't give them everything at one because that will overwhelm them. And as you know, the cleaning business has too many um, uh, moving parts. So there's cancellations, complaints, people running late, uh, having accidents. Um, you know, they forgot uh, the vacuum, you know, just too many things. So don't overwhelm them, start it little by little. And, um, you know, they get to learn your business and then you're going to be so happy uh, after a while because all you need to do is just check your Slack and then that, that's all you do. Um, you know, the feedback loop is key. This is very key. You know, you need to always tell them at the end of the week, what can we do to improve X? You know, make sure you identify and uncover any issues they might be having. For example, you know, hey, what, what can I, what can I do to make your job easier? You know, was this was there a challenge this week? Um, you know, what task is confusing you? You know, what's something you don't like to be doing? Because those also, you know, there might be something that they're not comfortable doing, and you know, you need to address that quickly, so so you can, you know, delegate that to someone else. Um, but yeah, that's pretty much it. I I hope this video, you know, it was informative. Um, so all you need to do is um. To download this guy, the hiring guy that um, you saw here, just go to www.customerserviceva.com and uh, enter your information, and you should be uh, receiving your guide in your inbox. And if you have any questions or you need some help hiring your own VA, please reach out to me. Uh, uh, I'll be happy to to help you. Um, absolutely, you know, I love to help people and, um, just reach out to me through the website or send me a, uh, an email to chris at qbclean.com. So my email is chris at qbclean.com if you have any questions. All right. I hope you enjoyed the talk. Bye-bye.